Hi, welcome back to Movie Review Mom. And if this is your very first time visiting my YouTube channel, yay, you're here, you found me, you made it. I'm so glad. I hope you like what you see and I hope you subscribe and come back. So my goal here at Movie Review Mom is to give you the heads up on filmmaking quality and content so you can make the best decision for you and your family as to whether or not you wanna spend time and money watching a specific film. Well, today I'm reviewing a very special documentary called The Smartest Kids in the World. Good title, right? This intriguing documentary aired at the Doc NYC Film Festival and will be available exclusively on Discovery Plus channel on August 19th, 2021. It's not rated because it's a documentary, um, but I would probably give it a G or a PG. There's really nothing offensive, but I'll give you tips for parents here in just a little bit. The length of it is 105 minutes. So in a nutshell, this movie is based on Amanda Ripley's New York Times bestseller called The Smartest Kids in the World, which chronicles a year abroad with four American teenagers who study in countries that dramatically outperform the United States in education. We travel with them as they adjust from their local high schools in Wyoming, Orlando, Maine, and the Bronx to high schools in Finland, South Korea, Switzerland, and the Netherlands. The film does a really great job giving voice to teenagers who know firsthand what it's like to be a student in a foreign country from an American perspective. I think it's super interesting to hear about their discoveries and insights about how to reform the U.S. education system so that we can do better. A New York Times bestseller, The Smartest Kid in the World, was published in 15 countries and chosen by The Economist, The New York Times, The Washington Post, as one of the most notable books of the year when it came out. Here's a quote. This timely and inspiring book offers many insights into how to improve America's mediocre school system, said Publishers Weekly. Continuing the quote, the Washington Post said, the most illuminating reporting I've ever seen on the differences between schools in America and abroad. The documentary was the movie version of that book and was directed by Tracy Dros Tragos. So let me tell you about some of the things I liked and didn't like. First of all, I actually think the movie poster is really clever. We often assume that the countries around the world that are excelling in education must be using some secret superhero formula to score so well on exams. As a university professor at two colleges, I've often wondered what exactly it is that they're doing that we're not doing here in the United States. So I was completely fascinated to learn more through the eyes of these American teenagers. I appreciated the fact that both the book and the film explore the quality of education from the eyes and experiences of teenagers rather than just experts and those who are doing research on the subject in an academic manner. When I was in high school, I was actually an exchange student in Mexico for a summer. I didn't actually attend high school because it was summer, but I definitely improved my Spanish and experienced real Mexico and real teenagers and talked about how they learned and what they thought about school. The data about education show one thing, but teens who have actually gone to school abroad can offer so many more insights. I also did a study abroad program in Spain when I was earning my undergraduate degrees in college. Traveling and living abroad is extremely educational and eye-opening. Those international experiences can expand your way of thinking more than anything else really that I can think of. Three of my sons have lived, worked, and studied abroad in China, Argentina, and Nicaragua. I believe that cultural understanding and appreciation is so important to improving foreign relations that I earned two bachelor's degrees in international relations and in Spanish. I actually heard that Pepperdine University requires students to do a study abroad before they can graduate. I think that is awesome. Americans who are able to travel abroad always come home with two things, 
greater appreciation for both their own country here in the United States and for other countries. All right. So that explains why I was super enthusiastic about watching this documentary. I thought it was really good that the film showed the struggles as well as the triumphs that the American students had while studying abroad. It is definitely not easy in the beginning. There is culture shock and homesickness. And some of that is definitely represented in the film. Learning about the South Korean exams was super interesting. I've actually taught in Asian schools in China several times and education there is no joke. It is extremely intense and competitive like it's represented in the film in South Korea. It was fascinating to hear the Minister of Education talk and express his desire that the testing tradition in South Korea be more humane. And that is the truth because like I said, it is intense and competitive and just crazy. <laughs> now, there were some things I didn't like about the movie or thought could have been handled better. For example, we saw a lot of blank stares on the faces of these American students once they arrived in the foreign country. So it wasn't really explained if they had had foreign language traveling before they arrived there. And if so, how did they prepare? Many of the scenes show the American students speaking English with classmates and teachers, so I couldn't tell how many of those schools adapted to the Americans versus the Americans adapting to the schools in terms of the language used during the lessons. There's one student who does speak French quite well, and you're like, oh, awesome. And then you see a little clip of another student giving a speech in Korean towards the end of her stay, so that's awesome. But the other students, I don't know that I really could tell if they learned the language before they arrived or were just kind of picking up a little bit as they were going along. The timeline jumps from when the students first arrive in their new countries to when they come home. So I wanted to know more about the in-between. We see a little bit, but I wanted to know what were the big secrets that they discovered about how those other countries are doing so well. There are a few interview moments towards the end, but they were short and I wanted to explore every aspect of the educational system. There's a little bit about the social life and some studying, but not much in terms of content and life work balance and that kind of stuff. I think it could have been really nice to point out some of the things that the American schools do well and even better than the other schools in the world. The film mostly talked about how terrible the American education system is. And I think we do a lot of things very well. For example, in my time in China, I saw that those students were very robotic in their academics. They memorized, memorized, memorized which is important and super helpful in education. However, they weren't learning the critical thinking skills that our universities here in America expect out of our high school students. They didn't know how necessarily to think and analyze and evaluate all of the information that they were studying. And I think that's pretty typical for Asia. So I would have loved to have seen more exploration on that as well. I couldn't find a trailer for this film when I first was given the assignment from the studio. So I'll keep looking and, and I'll put that on my website, moviereviewmom.com <laughs> as soon as I can. When people spoke in foreign languages in the film, we weren't always given subtitles to know what was being said. Otherwise, it was really fun to just to get a tiny flavor of the countries. I would have loved even more just because I love international travel and study so much. Now, let me give you some tips for parents. First of all, I think young children will be very bored, but teens might be interested, especially if they have been considering studying abroad. And watching this movie together could be a really great opportunity for parents and their teens to talk about possibly arranging for a study abroad program. There's no profanity or offensive content, and I always appreciate that. So some positive themes that are definitely worth talking about if you watch this film together, and ones that were illustrated well are certainly education, culture, being open-minded, 
hard work, life balance, and happiness. So ultimately, uh, with some room for improvement, the movie review mom grade I'm giving this documentary is an A minus. I thought it was a great start for a really important conversation. It's embarrassing to be an American whose education system is not number one. We pride ourselves on being the best in everything. And of course, we're not. And education is certainly one of them. And again, as a university professor, I see a lot of students coming in from high school who are very ill prepared for a higher education and a very rigorous academic experience. So I know that there's much room for improvement. All right. So before I go, let me give you a recommendation for another documentary that I think you'll also really enjoy if you're interested in this one. This one also appeared at the Doc NYC Film Festival last year, and I did a movie review of this on my YouTube channel and on my website, so you could check those out. It focuses more on elementary education. It's called Chasing Childhood and allowing some time for children to be children and to teach them how to have work, life, school, balance. I thought it was very well done. All right, that's it for my movie review. I hope that if you watch this, you enjoy it and that it inspires you to get involved in the education system in your area to volunteer or to help see what you can do to kick up the American education system a notch or two or three. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I really appreciate it. Be sure and click on that little bell and it'll notify you every time I upload a new movie review or trailer reaction. Thank you also for those of you who are going over to Patreon to support me there. All right. I will catch you in the next movie review. And until then, bye for now.